Hello, my name is Scott Tarter. We're here at the Riverdale Stables in Van Cortlandt Park in the Bronx in New York City. And today we're going to be looking at Bandit Walking Away. <laughs> you gotta be in on this with me, you gotta be in on this with me. All right, one more try. Today, Bandit and I will be looking at video clips of horses in Hollywood movies. You have to watch out for their front feet. There's an old horseman's phrase that say the back feet put you in the hospital, the front feet put you in the grave. Rearing up like that and striking out like that is a sign of aggression. He's definitely upset at something and is striking out at something. As opposed to kicking from behind is more of a defensive thing. If it was me, I probably would have taken the blindfold off and reduced it down to only one person and walked them through more carefully. <coughs> If you were to take one of our domesticated horses here, we have horses here that have lived here for 20 years, in a stall, regularly fed, regularly watered, blankets when it's cold, medicine when they don't feel well, to take them and then turn them out in a field and say you now need to fend for yourself, find your own food, find your own water. Ours may not deal with that type of, of open line like that as much. In the movie it looks great because they're super healthy and off they go, but if you take a horse here that has, let's say, bar shoes, bar shoes are like an orthotic shoe and they can walk around it, it makes them feel very comfortable. So let's take away their orthotic shoes, take away their blankets, take away all these things and turn them out in the field by themselves. Obviously in this scene, they seem to be out in a very large pasture, a lot more space. The horse is very healthy, he probably could join the rest of the herd. Many of the rest of ours would run immediately back into the barn because that's their place of safety. The bit was the first thing. Terrible bars of cold, hard steel between your teeth and over your tongue. If you've never had one in your mouth, you can't imagine what a shock it is. But thank heaven for oats. The bit is the point of contact from the reins going from the rider to the horse. When the rider is asking them to turn, it's the point of contact from the reins into the horse. Food is a great distraction. We don't technically use oats in our industry here. We use more of a pelleted grain or a textured grains, but I definitely use food as a distraction. It's Secretariat at the finish. Secretary is probably one of the most famous racehorses in history. In 1973, he won the Kentucky Derby, he won the Preakness, and he won the Belmont becoming a triple crown winner. But he didn't just win it. He won the Kentucky Derby by a length or two. Came from behind and won the Kentucky Derby. And then weeks later, won the Preakness by a few lengths as well. And everyone said, now the Belmont's the longest race. The Belmont's the longest race. He'll never be able to keep up. He'll never be able to keep up. He didn't just win the Belmont. He annihilated anybody in the Belmont by winning over 33 lengths. In modern sports, it would be like having a Super Bowl where the scorer was 79 to three. It would be like watching a, a uh, World Series baseball game where the score was 44 to two. He didn't just win, he made it abundantly clear that he was by far the best horse in the field. I'm impressed he was able to get to the top of the mountain. I'm impressed he was able to try and make that jump. But short of wings <laughs> attached to him, uh, I think the distance of that jump would be too far. In reality, I mean, that's the beauty of animation. You can make things happen that can't happen. Uh, but the idea of him jumping what looks like probably be more than 80 feet, which would be like jumping across the width of this ring over here, it's just there's no way he could be going fast enough and our friend Gravity would have gotten in the way long before he would have gotten to the other side. One hook time, coming up. <laughs> Yeah, that, that tickles. I've never seen a horse be ticklish at their feet. We do polish their feet. When the farrier gets done shoeing, he takes the rasp and rasps down the nails and polishes it up. But I wouldn't call it ticklish. The outside of their feet is relatively insensitive. The coronary band, where the, where the hair meets the hoof, that's quite sensitive and bleeds quite a lot if they get cut there. Because that's a point where growth is happening, where the hoof is growing down and growing down and growing down. It's almost like the back part of your fingernail. So that spot is quite sensitive. But I wouldn't know if I would use the word ticklish. And I definitely haven't heard one laugh.
Vertex, please. You're letting the sadness of the swamps get to you. If we had one here that was stuck like that, we would try and get a rope around them. We would try and stabilize them. We would use jump poles and things like that to get underneath them and be able to lift them up. There are cranes and, and items like that that are used by tow trucks and other ent entities to get them out. But what strikes me oddest in that scene is the fact that he doesn't struggle at all. That you would think that as he's sinking away in there, realizing that there's no escape, and really the horse's only main defense is their ability to escape, to run away quickly, to get away quickly. And that's been taken away in this scene. And he's sinking slowly and slowly and slowly and shows no sign at all of being upset by that. Any of the horses I've met would have struggled. They probably still would have sunk, but they would have struggled in the process. quite dangerous uh, and just trying to stop at the other end just the sheer momentum of going further and faster and faster and faster on the way down there I can't imagine in the scene the trees are still upright so it looks like he is actually going down something that steep he's in an Australian Outback saddle which have the two big braces in the front if he really rode down that hill that's quite impressive we have 180 horses between the three barns and 600 riders a week and I can't think of anybody who would want to ride down a hill like that Horses serve a different place in the modern world now because they're definitely more recreational animals. They're not pulling plows, they're not in the military. We have ponies and horses here that teach lessons every day. And we teach at each of our farms, we teach over 250 lessons a week where adults and kids learn to love their time around the horses. I would really like to see today's modern horses that are recreational horses as opposed to occupational horses and see that represented more on screen than uh, they have been in the past. Of all the famous bandits in the west of yesterday, the greatest was a man of high.